us sensitive, God. Make us sensitive, Lord. We don't want to rush you, God. We don't want to rush you, Lord. We don't want to have our own agenda, God. Come and move. Come and touch lives. Mm, so we ask, God, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. And let us experience the glory. Acknowledge right now that you are in this room. We are not talking to a distant God. You are not far off. You are right here in our midst, dwelling among us. You inhabit the praises of your people. Father, let us be sensitive to that. Let us learn to rest in you. Let us learn to be okay with being quiet and still. We're so busy talking, we forget to listen. And so God, this morning, our ears are open. We're listening for you, God. We're honoring you and blessing you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, church, that was a beautiful time of worship. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the heaven. <laughs> flood this place and fill the atmosphere. <laughs> Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for, to be overcome. 
by your presence. Slip your hands up to the Lord right now. Just, just say, Lord, I worship you. I worship you. All my heart, all my soul, I worship you. Mm-hmm. We worship you. We worship you. Mm-hmm. Would you just sing that one more time? Such a sweet presence. Father, we thank you today for the wonderful, wonderful presence of the Lord that is in this place. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we open our hearts and we just yield and we just ask you, oh God, that you would move in our hearts, our lives, and everything about us today. Let this, Lord, not just be a church service, but Lord, I just pray that this would be an experience for us. An experience, oh God, I pray. I just want to really be quick to get out of that. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our hands we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Oh, come on, sing that one more time. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Father.
thank you, Lord. 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 We worship you, Lord. We love you. We worship you today. We love you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you get in the presence of the Lord, and the Bible said concerning the king in the book of Proverbs, it said, don't be hasty to go out of his presence. In regards to that, um, most of you probably have seen in the news or on social media that there is a student revival that has broken out at Asbury College in Kentucky. And they went to chapel on Wednesday morning, and last I checked, they haven't left. They've been there 24 hours a day just worshiping the Lord. And kids 18 to 22 are just coming from all over. They're coming across state lines. They're coming in. And the Spirit of the Lord is inviting us to slow down and stop and pay attention to Him. He's calling us. So let's don't be hasty. Let's don't be hasty to get out of His presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. We just tell the Lord that just I love you, Lord, more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. With all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my strength, with all of my might, with all of my mind, oh God, I worship, I worship, I worship. I worship you, I worship you. sing that everybody lift your hands and sing I love to worship you I love to worship you hallelujah I love to worship you I love to Come on, that's so simple. But everybody can sing that. Sing. I love to worship you. I love to worship you. Hallelujah. I love to worship you. I love to worship you. Come on, one more time, sing that, everyone. Sing, I love to worship. Oh, I love to worship you. Yes, I do. Oh, I love to worship you. I love to worship you. I love to worship you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 While we pause for just a moment, I just some of you have needs. I just want you to lift it up before the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's freedom. The Spirit of the Lord that's in this place right now will set you free in areas that you didn't know you were bound. Lord, just we just lift our hearts to you right now. We just pray, Father, that every need would be met in this place today, I pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can everybody say amen? Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, go ahead and be seated for just a moment. We're just going to pray that this service today just touches our lives in every area. I want you just to be ready for that. Holy Spirit, just do the work in us today. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's kind of uh, things that we forget. We don't realize, you know, this being family worship center, certainly worship is the very, that should be the very core, not just of kind of what we do, but it's who we are. We, we want to worship. We want to worship him. And that's something that only is birthed out of relationship and communion with him. And, you know, family is the next thing that is very important to us. That's just our core. I just believe God wants a family here that that is complete, that is whole. Now, do we have problems? Yeah, yeah, we got problems all over the place. But as a family, we just gather our hearts together and we love one another and we serve one another. And if there's a need, we'll get that need taken care of. Amen. And so this morning, we have something very wonderful that uh, we want to do. Um, we, we celebrate the babies that come into our lives. We dedicate them to the Lord. And that's a very important thing in a, in a family's life. I think sometimes we just kind of blow past it and we, we don't realize the significance of actually dedicating that child before the Lord. The authority that you have and that you speak over that child's life stays with them their entire life. And it's important that we realize that. And so this morning, we're going to take Luke Hunt and we're going to dedicate him to the Lord. And I, I want this morning, I'd like for the family just to come up here with me, if you would, and bring the young guy. And we're just going to, we're just going to dedicate him to the Lord. Angie, I'd like for you to also come, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just all the family come. And we're just going to, we're going to have this wonderful time of celebration and of dedication to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here, scatter a little bit on this side here. Get in the middle where they can see everybody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pretty cute. You know, children are like kind of like dogs. They're so cute when they're puppies, and then they just grow up to be old hound dogs. <laughs> but sure cute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Casey and Danielle, we're going to we're going to pray. Angie, come over here with me. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your family. We're going to declare the blessings of the Lord over young Luke. You ever just want to say, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> the blessings of the Lord over this young man. As my tradition, I always like to bring some definition because I think names have significance. Names declare Names are prophecies about the life that the child is to become. We find that in so many things throughout the Bible. Luke, immediately what popped up as I began to search for it was bringer of light, light bringer. Isn't that incredible? Light of the sacred flame, enlightened light bringer.
I want to read this scripture to you, 1 John 5, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him. We declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet not and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purges us, purifies us from all sin. So fellowship is the result of walking in light. Communication, connection, fellowship, relationships. And I just wanted to declare over Luke's life that this is going to be something in him, that he's going to have a tremendous anointing for relationship. He's always going to be reaching out to someone else. Amen. So what we're going to do is quickly pray. <laughs> we're going to ask God's blessings to be on young Luke. Thank you, Lord. He's all right. He's all right. Father, we want to say thank you today for this blessing that you've given us in Luke. This is the child that they prayed. They've stood in agreement. They prayed. They have fasted. They called upon you in his behalf. And now here we stand that he's here as an answer to prayer. And Father, we, Angie and I, in this church, we set ourselves in total agreement with them. And we just declare the blessings of the Lord be upon him all the days of his life. I declare in the name of Jesus that his life will be full of relationships, of fellowship with the Lord, and fellowship with everyone around him. Lord, I just anoint him and I bless him in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Casey and Danielle, I want to just charge you both in the name of the Lord Jesus that you accept the commission that God's given you as a mom, as a dad, as overseers, as someone who's going to guide this child and everything that he thinks and everywhere he goes, you're going to lay the foundation for him. So I just charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you commit your life and your heart to that mission and that 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 commission that God has given you. And today the new anointing is going to rest upon you and you're going to walk with greater authority in this area. You're going to speak into his life in a way that's very powerful. And we're believing that God's going to raise him up as a tremendous man of God. So I commission you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And to his family, I want to give a commission to you. I just want to declare that your part in his life is as significant as the part that mom and dad plays. And you may not be there for everything, but you're there to pray for him. And you're to declare the blessings of the Lord, to watch out for him, to stand in faith for him. And so I just commission you as a family that you make the decision to stand with him and undergird him and all that he puts his hands to. Because he doesn't just have a family that consists of one or two people. He has a family. He has a big family. And the family's growing. Amen. And I want to just commission this congregation that we will accept the responsibility, that we will take what we need to take to be able to minister to and cover. Paul made the statement. He said, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. And I just believe that God's going to bring him to your remembrance at times when you need to pray for him and you need to lift him up. So we just declare in the name of Jesus, would everybody just reach your hand this way right now? Father, we just declare as a family, as a full family, we declare the blessings of the Lord. And today we dedicate young Luke, we dedicate him to the Lord. And we just pray, let your blessings be upon him now in Jesus' precious name. And everybody say, amen. 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 Would you give Luke a hand of appreciation and welcome this morning? Thank you, guys. Would you give her a hand of appreciation this morning? Call me out upon the 
oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I My soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in. Deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now. So.
fly away, oh glory, I, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, pie and pie, I'll fly away. Let's do it again, guys. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory, I, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, pie and pie. Come on, stand up and sing that with us one time. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, bye and bye. I fly away. Oh, man. I hate to stop that. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are so grateful today how you've blessed us as families. We want to say thank you, Lord, for blessing our businesses. I just ask God that you'd prosper, flourish. I declare the blessing over everything they do, every place they go. Give them favor. Give them honor, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Please remain standing with me for just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Alicia, where are you? Oh, here you are. I just love this girl. I, I'll tell you the truth. It's what a what a blessing. Your mom and dad are here. Yeah. Yeah. You guys look way too young to have. Welcome. So glad you're here. Yeah, they're amazing. They raised me in the house of the Lord, and yeah. my dad's an amazing Bible teacher. Yeah. My mom loves Jesus more than anyone I know. So. I believe that. I believe that. We're going to just worship for a moment. Can we just do that? And I'm going to just take a few moments. And Teddy, would you mind just bringing the lights down just a little bit so we can just kind of set our hearts just to worship? We'll get into the Word in just a second, and I won't preach a long time this morning, but I just, I just feel such a a need in my heart. I need his presence this morning. I just, I need this. It isn't a matter of it would be nice if it happened. I need this. I need this. And so we just kind of, just just close your eyes and just just look within. Just just open your hearts. Let's just, let's just yield to the Holy Spirit this morning. We just sing this and we'll, we'll just see what the Holy Spirit wants to say. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. Yes.
Jesus, for once we were lost and now we're found, once we were blind, but then your spirit touched us and our eyes were opened. And we looked into your face at Calvary and we saw your eyes full of grace and mercy and unfathomable love that chases us down. This is the end of the read. This is the end of the Everything the world had to offer And nothing satisfies quite like in church Nothing satisfies He places a hunger inside of us And we keep searching And we keep seeking And we keep looking And he's saying today Fix your eyes on me Fix your eyes on me. I have everything you need. Everything you're longing for. Everything you're hungry for. It's found in Him. Everything you're looking for. Stop searching right now. I have the answer. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. This is the air I breathe. Hallelujah. This is the Holy presence, your holy presence, yeah. living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoke to me. Now come on, sing this. I'm lost without it. And I, I'm hallelujah.
thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for your presence today, for the anointing that is in this place that has just touched our hearts today, our church. Lord, as a family, we gather together and we lift up our voices as one. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've given us, the precious gift that you've given us in Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, guys. I so, 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 so much appreciate all of our musicians. Um, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, the, group, the grace of God that's on this, these, this group of musicians is just amazing. It truly is. Thank you, Lord. I do want to encourage everyone to please stick around. You may not like football and you may not like chili. But I want you to come anyway. And I want you to be a part of this. Um, anything of significance is you have to sacrifice for. Um, it, and, and that's really the truth. Those are the things that we hold most valuable, things that just come too easily. They're easily taken. They're easily dropped. And that's just a way of life. And I just think, I think you need to really make the relationships that we have in each other. Let the investment happen there. And uh, I, I promise you, God, God wants to bless you. He really does through somebody else. You've heard me say this a bunch of times, but when God wants to bless you, he sends someone in your life. And when Satan wants to curse you, he sends someone in your life. Amen. But all the movement in your life takes place through those connections, through those relationships. And that's why it's so important that you not despise what God brings and invest yourself in somebody else and take some time. We just had this wonderful service yesterday about Pastor Steve, uh, Steve Pastor Steve Bonda, and um, boy, it was just one of the most beautiful services that I think I've ever been in. Uh, and and you just on and on you just hear about the people that Pastor Steve touched and that he so selflessly gave himself to so many people and and you know at the end of our days I don't think that there's a better thing that can be said of uh, of us than we invest ourselves in others and so this is a wonder this this fellowship time is great okay. And I just encourage you, there's no need to put your name on your chili. Just bring it in and just set it up there. <laughs> David will know who it belongs to. <laughs> uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, last week, uh, oh, incidentally, I am doing a daily teaching uh, on Facebook, I'm doing it live. And we're doing chapter by chapter. So I'm just taking one chapter, and I have just gone through through the Bible. And there's some real uh, things. This doesn't take but 15 minutes, but it's worth the time for you to take just a few moments and join with me. If you can't be with me live, you can always pick it up later. But it will be a blessing. We're just now going into 2 Timothy, and uh, I, I think it will open some some things that we have such a tendency just to cherry pick scriptures and we really don't understand the, the context of what's happening and those things that that was said and as a result that's many times how people get off 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 script is because they don't know the context they just kind of take a scripture and fit it into whatever and and certainly God can do that but but still it's important that you that you study study to show yourself approved and so uh, join with me I, I try to do that every morning about 9, 9.30, 10, 10, 30, 11, somewhere in that area. <laughs> I try to do it before noon, and, uh, but you can, you can get it any time, okay? All right. Last week I said a couple of things that uh, stirred some real interest. I feel like I need to recap because I'd, I'd like to pick up and, and maybe recap a few things we talked about last week and then take it just a step further. Uh, you know, last week we had questions concerning Adam, and most of the ideas concerning Adam and his fall, uh, you know, I've I just got to tell you, I've lived most of my adult life with a misconception about what was taking place there. Almost everyone has had the attitude, well, <laughs> Adam blew it, okay, 
So what God's going to try to do is he's going to try to make the best out of a mess. He's going to try to, you know, he's going to try to make this better. We're going to kind of get a second start there. I know that fell apart, but uh, God's, you know, God's really going to take what Satan meant for evil and he's going to work it for good. You know, we just kind of fit, fit our, our ideas around that. But the Lord really began to deal with me about that, that that wasn't the case at all. And we, we have a tendency to only see a small picture, and we don't understand that God's working on a broader scale. I found it so interesting that the Bible said that Jesus, the, the cross took place before the foundation of the world. When, when the forms were just being put up to build the house, God already knew what was going to take place. Think about that for just a moment. Christ was, was offered before the foundation of the world. That was God's plan, which takes me even further and makes me realize that we were also in that plan. And, and so that went back to the foundation of the world. Everything that he did had a design, starting at the very beginning of creation. God wasn't caught by surprise on anything. And it was, uh, it was just, I jotted this down. Let me just recap here. Uh, Revelation 13, 8, where he talked about, he said the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world to bring about salvation to all mankind. So, and, and it seems like, why go through all the trouble? I mean, if, if you're wanting to create something, why not just, figure where you're wanting to go and just create that? Why, why start back here and let this journey take place all the way from the very beginning, all the way through all of these haps and mishaps until finally we get to the place we want to go? I mean, God's obviously capable, so why didn't he just do that? And, and so, you know, I just really began to pray about that, you know, because God could. He could just create whatever he wanted to, but there's something I... I there's something I feel God couldn't create. Now, that's a weird sound, isn't it? There was something God wanted that didn't just come by creation. I mean, how many things has God created? How, how old is God? Just got a question you got to ask. How old is he and how long has he been creative? There's no telling. I mean, I don't even know how to wrap my brain around something like that. But the Bible speaks of 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And, you know, all of these angels and creatures and, and all of these things that he had created throughout time. And, and it was fascinating to me that he was looking for something more than that. Of all of the things that he created, of all of the angels, of all of the Lord knows what, and even Adam that created, and we can certainly see that God, God, they worship God, they praised God, they, they celebrated God, but God was looking for something more that wasn't just going to come from a creation. God was looking for somebody to love him. And it was a love that would only come from the concept of loss and redemption. There was a process of what God was, was going to do. It, it was amazing to me. Of all of the things that we see in all of the angels or whatever, or even of Adam, even though Adam talked to him in the cool of the day, there was not one indication that he loved him. See, God is love, and that's the thing. God's looking for that connection, that relationship. That's what he was wanting. And, and he created the world with the intention of making a family that was not just equal to him and could have fellowship with him and could commune with him, but one that would love him. One that would love him. Now, you know what the deal is. You've, you've been with people that you liked or that you knew, but then there's a difference between that one that you love. It's just, I mean, and, and it, that was what he was looking for. Not, not only that looked to him and understood him, not only that would just kind of sit with him on the throne and rule over the handiworks of his hands, but rather one that had the capacity to love him as he loved them. And that's what God was wanting. And, and just creating a creature just simply couldn't do that. I mean, it had to be, the, the, it was a love that had to be birthed out of something, a devotion, a love that could only come at a cost 
It was a love and a devotion that could only come out of a cost, a value that only comes out of loss and out of redemption. So he created the world with all its splendor, with all the beauty, with a plan, and that plan went beyond Adam. And that was one of the things that I want to just mention to you is the fact that (laughs) the plan was always bigger than Adam. Adam wasn't just the, the, the being that he created just to, to be, be fruitful and multiply. The plan was always bigger. Adam was never intended to be the final product. That wasn't God's plan. He was the seed. He was the prototype. He was certainly going to be instrumental in producing this, this race of, of God people that was created in the likeness and the image of God he was certainly that, he, but, but he, <laughs> he was going to give birth to the one that was going to take us to the next level. See, my point in that was the fact that I wanted you to see, you weren't an afterthought. That's so important that you get that. You weren't a plan B. And most of the time in the church, that's almost the feeling that we get. You know, the first Adam, he brought mankind into the earth, but the second Adam, he brought mankind into the new birth and brought them into a position of being equal with God. Adam got us here. Jesus took us there. So it was a process that God had in mind from the foundation of the world that he was going to create something that, that was going to have to cook for a little while. You know, come on, some of you have looked at these delicious meals as you put in the oven, and you think, dear God, this is going to be good when it's done. That was, that, was, that was the plan of God. It didn't just start out and boom, there it is. This was something that literally was birthed, and it grew, and it developed, and you were in the plan of God as much as Adam was. Adam was Adam was just, I mean, what he had was wonderful. He had authority. He had all of those things. We can see that he gave that away. Lucifer approached Jesus on the Mount of Temptation, and he said, I'll give you this if you'll worship me, for all of these things have been given me. Well, where did he get that? He got that from Adam. That was Adam's authority that he, that he ripped off. That's what he stole. Adam certainly carried authority. But I want to say to you that the position that you hold is different than that what Adam had. Adam, Adam, you are an upgrade from what Adam was. You are a new creature in Christ, a species of being, one translation said, that never before existed. You know, it's one thing to be created in the likeness, the image of God. But it's another thing to be birthed into that. To where you are as much God as he is to him. (laughs) Be patient with me here because this is one of those things, your heart's bigger than your mouth. It's hard to explain what it is that you see. I was raised with a mindset that I was just an old sinner saved by grace, and God help us, help us. If I can just hold out to the bitter end, Lord Jesus, please help us. And, you know, when we get to heaven, we're going to be surprised. Who's, we're going to, first of all, be surprised that we made it. So I'm not kidding. I'm surprised. Oh, dear God, we made it. Hallelujah. And then we're going to look and say, I didn't think you'd be here. I mean, that, that's, that, that, is it. that was where I was raised. I mean, it was with a sin consciousness. God's going to get you for that. Now, he had not figured out what you've done yet, but he will get to you soon. And you start thinking about that, and that's the way you live. That's the, that's, that becomes a mindset. You know, if, if I mess up, we, we've had to get saved at least twice a week, sometimes three times. We constantly live with a sin consciousness that we're somehow not accepted of God. We're saved and then we're lost. Well, I'm saved. You know, the Bible talks there in the book of Revelation, what is it, chapter 21, 22? It said, I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life. 
And it said the dead was judged out of the things written in the books. There is a, there is, God does have a computer system that he's going to talk to you about. But that book that he wrote was the book of life. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. Of course, we believed that there was a pencil and it, it was written in disappearing ink. It was, there was an eraser. We had, we had one angel that watched and said, here he comes, write his name down. Well, hold, hold there he goes. Mark that out. And it was, it was, it was torment. It was torment. You couldn't, you couldn't tell where you stood with God. There's a sin consciousness. Isn't that amazing? We get that, and, and that was the last thing that God wanted. Did you know that the first thing that God wanted to establish in you was identity? And that's the very thing that Satan attacks the moment you get saved is your identity. Like I said, you're just an old sinner saved by grace. You are not. You were a sinner. You were saved by grace. But now you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. You are a new species of being that never before existed. Now I stand not in my own righteousness, which is rags, which is my best efforts. Galatians said, if I'm doing anything beside trusting in Christ, then I've fallen from Christ. That's filthy rags. Well, God, here's my best effort. That's filthy rags. I'm not coming to God based on anything that I've done. You are not saved by anything. You didn't bring anything to the table. It's all in Jesus. That's, that, that's what it is. And when we come to him, we are born again. Now, I'm not sure how you get unborn again. But see, we've still got that sin consciousness, and it doesn't take very much. Well, you said a bad word. You're, you're not saved. Really? How is it that my DNA was changed? How is it that my life was changed? How is it that I was born from death to life and because I blew it suddenly? Well, how does that happen? See, God wanted to bring us to the place that we weren't just, I mean, the intention of God was to bring you to a place of walking and fellowship with him There's no difference in God's mind than you and Jesus. Not a nickel's worth of Jesus. Jesus has no more right in the throne of God than you do. Because you're not there based on the, your works. You're, you, you, when you got saved, you came, the Revelation 1 said, you came to him, he washed you in his own blood, and he put his garment of righteousness on you. And now I stand before God, blameless, righteous. What does righteousness mean? Righteous means in right standing with God. Justification, just as if I never sinned. And in that freedom, I can celebrate the fact that I was lost. <laughs> I was that lost coin. I was that lost sheep. I was that lost son. And God's intention was, was to purchase me with the giving of himself. He, 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 maybe he could have sent an angel. I don't know. But in this case, the Bible said that the word became flesh. Somehow, the, the word of God birthed something in that little girl that was God-made flesh that dwelt among us. And the giving of himself for you because of love. Not out of obligation, but because of love. I love him because he first loved me. And when I begin to see that, and I recognize what God did in me, it generates a love that I don't even understand. I was dead in my trespasses and sin. I was without God. I was without a covenant. I was, I was alone. I was desperate. And he gave himself for me and died for me. And he purchased me. Paul said, I am a purchased possession. The work of the cross was done at the foundation of the world. 
Adam simply populated the world so God could generate this race that he could walk with and fellowship with and be seated in heavenly places in Christ. When the two disciples, they were there and their mom said, came went to Jesus and said, I want that my son sit one on the right hand, one on the left. And Jesus said, are they able to take what I take? Oh yes, they can take that. And he said, well, that's not mine to give. It's already been given. Well, who's it been given to? To you. We, the body of Christ, have been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. That was the end result of what God began at the foundation of the world. It wasn't Adam. Adam was just a tool. Adam was just a pawn. God had you in mind fellowshipping with him in a way that no other creature can do. All of creation stands in awe at what you are because I'm not just born in the, in the uh, Adam race that was created in the likeness of the image of God, but now I've been purchased by the blood of Jesus and I have been what Jesus said to Nicodemus, born again. I have been changed. I'm a new creature in Christ and now I stand as a result of what that happened. Now I stand in grace and covenant with God, walking with God in fellowship and communion as though sin never existed. I'm walking with him in a way, and, and what this does, this frees me. This frees me from condemnation. This frees me from the enemy trying to come in and sabotage my life. This frees me even... You know, I have to be so careful here because we've got so much tradition crammed down our throat that it's really difficult for us to really receive something that goes different than that. We were, <laughs> we've been freed from the constant condemnation of sin. Now, I have to explain because everybody, they're so used to saying, I sinned and you sinned and you sinned and you're going to hell for that and, and God's going to get you for that. I mean, that's how we live. Sin doesn't separate you from God. Nothing can separate you from God. <laughs> if that's all it took, you'd have been toast a long time ago. Nothing can separate you. Sin doesn't separate you from the love of God. It doesn't separate you from God. What does sin do? Well, all sin is based on selfishness. All of it. Every bit of it. The only way that I can get into sin is to get out of love. And the opposite of love is selfishness. Now, does that mean I'm not saved because I blew it? Well, you smoked a cigarette. Well, you did this. Well, you did that. Isn't it amazing how we categorize all of the things that we think is detestable to God? You're going to find out that God's a lot less shook up than we thought he was. So what does sin do? What does sin mean? Sin means simply to miss the mark. It's an archery term. I'm shooting for a target, but I miss the mark. I got off track. So it doesn't separate me from God. What does it separate me from? When I get out of love, it separates me from operating in the kingdom. The Bible says a husband and wife shouldn't quarrel because when they do, their prayers get hindered. The shield of faith operates by love. When I get out of love, the shield comes down and I begin to get hit by things that I would normally never get hit by. So the kingdom of God is what should flow in our life right now. That's what Christ brought us into. I'm a citizen of another kingdom. And the rights and the privileges of that kingdom belong to me. See, as American, there's rights and privileges that you have. That's why we have the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And everybody knows like the Second Amendment, I'm going to carry a weapon. And those of you that get carried away with that, we have the Sixth and the Seventh Commandment. Uh, commandment the Sixth and Seventh Amendment that says you're, you're going to get a good fair trial. <laughs> we, 
But people don't know that. They don't know. I'm, I'm a citizen of the United States. You can't tell me. I'm, I know I have rights. And a lot of people say, I have rights, and they don't even know what those rights are, but they're declaring, I have rights. Well, in the same way, the kingdom of God, you are born again into a kingdom. I'm not of this world. I'm of that world. I don't fit in this world. I fit in that world. That's my home. That's who I am. And we have to understand something here that whenever, I, which is a kingdom that operates by love. When I get out of love, that's when I get into sin. That's when I miss the mark. When I get out of love, the kingdom stops working in my life. That's why Jesus talks so much about forgive one another. Don't get caught in strife. Don't get caught in division. If somebody does something, if they hit you on the cheek, turn the other also. If they take your coat, give the other. In other words, don't make room to, for the devil to, to disengage you from functioning in what God called you to be from the foundation of the world. See, I'm called to more. You are called to more. We need to act like it. We need, we need to begin to function in this earth the way God intended for us to function from the foundation of the world. Adam brought us into this life, but Jesus Christ brought us into the kingdom and brought us into a new creation experience. And in that, the privileges of heaven belong to us. He gave us the word of God. The Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 1, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that by these scriptures you might escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I'm telling you, the word of God gives you privileges and rights and things that you can live by in this kingdom. But many times that's where, what happens. We get, we get in, I, I want to say sin, it needs to be maybe different. We need to say just things like what it is, gossip, jealousy, and envy, and strife, and criticism, and a few of those others that, I mean, is there any other names that I can throw in there? Anyone? 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 <laughs> Come on, you know what they are. Those are the things, and it separates me from you and not realizing that it separates me from God. And I know people, they are so super spiritual, they literally can float across this room, but they hate their brother. And as a result, their prayers don't get answered. Their life is hindered. The kingdom isn't functioning for them. Wait a minute. God called me into that kingdom from the foundation of the world. I'm not an afterthought. I'm, I was God's primary thought from the very beginning. I, I've been called into a higher place. I, I'm seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. But unfortunately, unfortunately, We've missed it, and we live our entire life through hoping that one of these days when we get to heaven, well, I'll tell you what, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have authority over the devil, and he ain't even going to be there. It's, it's, <laughs> you have been called to a higher place. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think of how I could capsulize that but I want to say, you were God's intention from the beginning. You were God's hope from the beginning. You were God's imagination from the beginning. He thought about you. Every one of you, God had you somehow in his mind. That's why you've got that quirky little personality that's different from anybody else. Don't ever try to change yourself. You've been made exactly the way God made you. Now, I'm, now, now don't get weird with it and start beating people up with it, but God made you the way you are. And I think it's important that we embrace that. And suddenly, I'm walking with an authority a boldness. That's why the Bible said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain favor, find grace to help in the time of need. What am I doing? I can come boldly. Now, what does that mean, boldly? See, a lot of people think boldly is just the fact that I'm going to tear the door off when I walk through and I'm bold, I'm here. That's not what it is at all. I, 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 and I know I've told you this, but bear with me just a second. I can be bold to my house whereas I can't be bold to your house. 
if you just said, you're going to my house, go on in, go on in, help yourself to the refrigerator, just, just go on, make yourself at home, prop your feet up. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If I go to your house, even if you have told me that, I'm going to walk in with a certain apprehension. You know why? Because I don't belong there. But that's not how I go in my house. I go in my house, I don't even think about it. Seriously, how many of you think about it when you go home? You don't even think about it. You just walk in the door. You know why? You belong there. That is boldness. It's not boldness and brashness. It's boldness and I belong there. And when he said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace, we most people have problems with that because they don't think they belong there. And they approach with intimidation, with fear, with uncertainty, with God, I'm really sorry, and, and God, I'm just, you know, and, and everything is in this tuck-tailed mindset that I don't belong there. But God created you from the very beginning to stand before him spotless and redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus. And now I can stand before him without any hesitation. Well, well, what about when I messed up? Can I just tell you something? When you messed up, that wasn't when... He, he didn't find out about it when you told him about it. He knew what was going on all along. You're not there because you're good enough. You're there because it was a gift. And he loved you. He loved me before I loved him. He gave himself for me, and out of the redemption, I fell in love with him. Oh, I love him. I can't explain it. I don't, I don't profess normally to be the smartest person in the world, but I'm just telling you something. I love him. I love him. I love him with all my heart. I love him with everything that is within me. Because I know, I, I, because of what he did for me. It isn't that I just worship him and acknowledge his greatness and say, oh, you are awesome. No, 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 I love him. I love, he don't have to do anything. I love him. I want to say this to you. God has more for you than you've been walking in. And it didn't start just when you got saved. It started at the foundation of the world. Can I say it one more time? You're not an afterthought. You are not a plan B. God's intention for you was from the very beginning. And when I begin to realize that suddenly there's a boldness rises up in my heart and I know, I know, I know what God's promised me. I know what he's provided for me. And some of you have problems. The reason some people have problems even with healing. You know why? They don't think they belong there. Some people have problems with being blessed on this side of that because they don't really think they belong there. God, would you please do this? Would you, God, would you please? I, I know I don't deserve it, but I just, you know, we don't think we belong there. And the idea of coming before God with the throne of grace with boldness that we may find grace to help in the time of need is when we walk in because we understand that I was God's plan all along and he's pretty smart. God is pretty smart. And he's got, the, he's got things under control. He's not lost control. Even times when things go crazy in your life, God's in the process of growing something in you in your hardships that won't grow any other way. Can somebody say amen? Amen. You know, I'm just telling you, some of the hardships, we hate hardships. We despise them. But it's those hardships that actually cause something to happen in us that we grow thereby. That's why he said endure hardness as a good soldier. God's in the process of working on you, but I'm telling you something. He's not caught off guard by you. So I want to say this this morning, and then I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask everybody that's in this place, maybe you just say, I, I have felt disqualified. I have felt like I was never good enough. I was felt like I was maybe the kid with my face pressed against the glass wishing I could come in. 
And some people, what they do is they spend their entire lifetime in the bathroom washing their hands. Hey, there's a banquet table. Wash your hands and then get to the table. God's got something for you. God has a banquet table for you. God has a life of grace and peace, and you don't have to be afraid. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I've always wanted to create a culture with my children that they were never afraid of me. I always wanted to create a culture with my children that they were glad to see. I was the first one they wanted to see, not the last one. And I want to say this concerning our Heavenly Father. God has created a culture where you're glad to see him. You trust him. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. God's at work in my life. I trust him. I trust him. And so what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to pray, and I want to include you in that prayer. If you're in this place right now and you just say, you know, I feel like I have lived a life of up and down of uncertainty as to who I was, and I've had so many people tell me I was this and I wasn't that, and, and, and you know, it's almost like I'm just victimized. I'm just jumping from pillar to post. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I, I hope I make it to heaven. I hope I'm saved. I've had people tell me, I don't even know if I'm saved. Isn't it amazing how that issue comes to their mind? There's such fear that people have. But God wants you to know, God wants you to know that, that he had you in mind. And you, you are his creation. And not just from the standpoint of Adam, but you're his creation from the standpoint of what has been done in you through Christ. I am, I am, I'm probably more like God than Adam was because of what Jesus has done in me. Adam was created in the likeness of image, but there was something more that happened to me through what Christ did. And I stand in great, great anticipation. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. So in your life, if you're going through those things right now, I just want you to bow your head and I'm going to pray. Father, I pray that you would help us that we're not constantly struggling with, are we good enough? Are you pleased? Do you love us? Are you still there? Lord, those thoughts should be foreign to our thinking. That should seem ridiculous to our thinking. Am I saved? I, I, I can't even imagine what that question would feel like. And I'm asking, Father, that you would heal every heart and every insecurity. I pray that all the voices that have told lies and that have has spread things, Lord, that was not like you, I'm asking, God, that you would speak to every person right now and strengthen their heart. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be open to receive that we might understand what you provided for us, not just at the cross, but at the foundation of the world. And that we, Lord, are that, well, Lord, we're not even finished cooking yet. There's still yet something to take place. There's still yet something to take place. So, Lord, I'm asking, confirm our hearts with this right now. Would you say right now, just say, Lord, receive me. I give myself totally to you. And I pray, Lord, that your word would be birthed in my heart that nothing else can take that away. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can everybody say amen? You know, that's just as I'm praying there, that just, that just dropped in my heart. God's not finished yet with you. Do you, do you know the resurrected body? You know, this body gives me authority in this earth. I have authority in this earth. Now, I, I get out of this body, I gotta leave this earth. But this gives me, but the resurrected body gives me authority in every realm that God ever created. There's yet something in front of us that is going to be wonderful. Pastor Steve, he's experiencing that right now. There is, he's got his eyes on something. There, there's more that God's got for us. We can look forward to what's coming with great anticipation and excitement. Man, I'm telling you, can I just turn to someone and say, God's not through with you yet. God is not through with you yet. Something wonderful is going to take place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.